If you want to start to cease your suffering and get out of your own way and start to commune more with the benevolent unseen realms, just jot down, you know, a couple of sentences to whoever it is you speak to, whether it's universe, source, God, goddess, whatever it is, and say, you know, your express your willingness to great mother earth and your soul and those other um, places you connect with talk out loud from your altar and from your heart that you're ready to um, begin to, to receive their messages. In today's busy world, how can we find the inspiration, knowledge, and energy to live a healthy and empowered life? If we balance and harmonize our mind, exercise our body, live according to the laws of nature, and connect to spirit, can we find a way to heal, become our authentic self, and live our purpose with love? I am your hostess, Amy Fournier, and welcome back to Awakening Aphrodite. Hello, my friend, and welcome back to Awakening Aphrodite with Amy Fournier. I'm so glad you're here in today's episode. I had the pleasure of speaking with Allison Charles. Allison is a shaman, and she just came out with an amazing new book. Before we get into the episode, because I can't wait to talk to you all about power animals and all the things I learned about connecting with nature and ourselves, I need to give a big virtual hug and kiss to one of my podcast review people, my peeps. Thank you so much for supporting me and this show by leaving a quick five-star review. And the latest one is from Vazzy0935. And she says, I just finished episode two and I absolutely loved it. I cannot wait to hear what Amy has to offer. I discovered her through Paul Check's recent post on Instagram. Cool in illustration, by the way. Oh, yes. Paul and I had uh, painted some uh, pictures of our myths and uh, they're up on our accounts. Anyway, she says, I'm so happy I finally found a podcast about femininity and spirituality. I've been looking for a podcast that was geared in this direction. Basically, I've been looking for Amy. Thank you for creating this space for me. I cannot wait to learn more through you and your journey. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Vazzy0935. I really so appreciate you because when you guys leave me reviews, not only does it help keep the show afloat, but it inspires me because I know I'm actually helping you and you're getting benefit from it. So it puts wind in my sails and a spring in my step to keep going. So thank you so much again. All right. So again, today's episode is with Allison Charles. Allison is a revered shaman, seeker, and spiritual teacher. She lives in Austin, Texas with her husband-to-be, Luke Story, black cat, jelly bean, and her dog, Cookie. She's devoted to being of service by living by the calls of her inner wisdom, mysticism, energy medicine, and shamanic practices she mastered through her studies with spiritual teachers, both of and beyond this world. She leads global courses, events, and talks to reconnect people to their fullest power and confidence through sacred practices. Allison has been a leading pioneer in bringing rituals and shamanism to places it's never been before. She's also the host of Ceremony Circle Podcast and the best-selling author of Animal Power. Allison's Power Animal Shamanic Journey was named, quote, a top meditation to try, unquote, by O, the Oprah Magazine. She's been called a leading shaman for expanding others into their full gifts of power and a full-fledged guide into your psyche by Forbes Magazine and the next big thing by Mary Claire Magazine. Allison was resident energy guru for the top wellness platform and has collaborated with a range of additional media outlets and brands, including the New York Times, HBO, National Geographic, Well and Good, Mind Body Green, L and Self. Wow. Obviously, this gal is a powerhouse and we are going to talk about what shaman is, shamanism is and why you probably want to know. We talk about the difference between being a shaman and living a shamanic life. Also, ways that you as a non-shaman can incorporate some of the techniques, tools, and wisdom that shamans live every day. We also talk about power animals, what they are, why you need to know if you have them, how to access them if you do, 
hint, hint, you definitely do. <laughs> and what nature is here to teach us and tell us and how we can commune with nature to make our lives better and contribute to the good of the planet. We also talk about Allison's journey to become a shaman and her journey of writing this book, which took her four years and her soul redirected her off a topic that she thought she was going to be writing about because of her connection with herself. Really interesting story. Allison shares with us her greatest spiritual teachers and resources that she uses all the time in her daily practice. And I ask her what the Eagle Condor prophecy is. Do you know what that is? I didn't know what it was, but we learn a lot. I learned a lot in this episode, super practical tips that you can apply to your everyday life. And I can't wait for you to hear it. So let's go now with Allison Charles. Allison, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here after meeting you in person about a month ago. It feels good to reconnect. Yes, Allison met me and my little Charlotte, and uh, I basically could not get Allison's attention because she just was connecting with my dog, I, which I was <laughs> very drawn. <laughs> She really pulled me in, I have to admit. <laughs> she does that to everybody, but probably more so with you, given your, your lineage and your background. But uh, yeah, the two of them had just a love fest going on. <laughs> She's such a sweetie. <laughs> Thanks, Alice. And she is the joy of my life. I always call her my my furry little Buddha. She's like my heart with fur on it. Yeah. And she's a special, special being, which I'm so excited to get in with you about how special and magnificent and magical and divine the animal and natural world is. I'm just mm -hmm. thrilled to have you on the show. So why don't you please give uh, our audience a little background about yourself. Mm. Huh. Okay, this is always the fun part where I need uh -huh. to tune in to try to whittle whittle the old voyage down a little bit. Let's see what, what version wants to come through today. Stand by. Okay, a little bit about myself. I have been very blessed and fortunate um, to have experienced a divine intervention and spiritual awakening um, many, many years ago. And I mean, I feel very fortunate to have had the entire life journey that I've had. So um, I don't want to have any of that misconstrued, but it was that divine intervention moment that really finally ah, just uh, cleared away a very entrenched egoic shell and lifted a very tightly drawn uh, veil over my own uh, divine truths and uh, ancient wisdom. And in that moment, my life completely changed. I was facing my greatest fears and uh, really, you know, in hindsight, realized that was my first major shamanic cave initiatory experience. And from that point, um, which was simultaneously complete devastation and complete miraculousness, uh, I decided to fly to Indiana where I'm originally from and spent time at my grandma's house. And over the course of the next week, additional spiritual gifts and abilities came on board and got activated. And I just had more and more awakenings around the truth of myself, that previous relationship that was the instrument, the catalyst for my awakening, and really about what earth life is and, and why I'm here. And so I decided to surrender and finally get out of my own way and finally get tired enough of suffering the way that I had previously been. And, and that choice was the second biggest, you know, turning point of my life, that surrender moment and got into total devotion to really opening myself up to finally hearing all the messages from my benevolent helpers in the unseen realms and of great mother earth and of my own soul and heart and have been heeding those calls ever since. And it's taken me on a most incredible, so far beyond imagination, uh, life path that I just continue to be in awe in every single day. And I hope that never changes. Like sometimes I'll, you know, when really potent synchronistic moments happen between friends and, and I might say, wow, you know, can you believe it? And they're like, well, yeah, of course I can believe it. But I actually don't ever want to be one of those people that's in that mode of like, 
well, duh, or of course, like I, I always want to be in the curiosity and the uh, infinite exploration of who I am and, and of everything. So um, that's, that's like a nutshell of from the intervention on, but before, which I think is helpful for some people to understand before that moment, I was a very uh, dedicated elite athlete and I was a hip hop radio show host and a television host. And so I think that's helpful because, um, you know, my life looks very different in a lot of respects than, than what it did before. And it's just one example of how anything is possible and people can change. And that's, that's the, lo the last little thing that I'll say that just came in. That's the other reason I'm not a fan of the cancel culture because it's like, I get that some people choose to not face themselves. It's a lot of intense work. It's, it's yeah. a lot of rites of passage. It is very crunchy, very gnarly. It can be highly uncomfortable, but there are those people that do choose to lean into that work. And so that whole labeling of like, let's get rid of them. Let's, you know, it's like the modern day version of the, the burning of the witches, you know, and it's like, let's remember that it is possible for people to really, truly make changes. And I'm definitely living proof of that. <laughs> Amen. That would be two of us, my friend. <laughs> so, uh, wow. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <I> was, <laughs> and yeah. without getting, you know, infringing on your, your personal life, but just for clarification for people to be able to relate or, and most importantly, learn from what you're sharing with us, uh, the divine intervention. So taking it, it was something extremely personal that hit you hard, that was basically like a wake up call, Allison, mm -hmm. that led you to pivot your life and then go to Indiana? Uh, or do you want to yeah. fill in any of that? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, it was it was a definite wake up call. I had been in a very long term um, previous romantic relationship that was okay. spanned over 16 years. And you know, we met each other very young. We were both athletes in college. And um, I believe I met him uh, the first day of practice. So I mean, like, really, the, the first moment I stepped on campus, our karmic adventure, I will call it began. And, um, and yeah, you know, two people and a, and it's still in a very activated pain body, uh, who had not yet faced wounds and traumas who were completely filled with denial and illusion. And, you know, at the time, doing the best we could, but there were definite points um, through that 16 and a half years where I did know better. I, I knew better unconsciously and consciously, yet I was choosing um, to stay in a situation that was very volatile and dysfunctional and toxic and at times abusive. And um, I take responsibility for, you know, my codependent uh, situation that I was in within my own self and my lack of self-worth. So there was a lot of exploring that um, I, of course, did after the awakening, but just was really in strong resistance to facing while I was in that 16 and a half years. And my body tried to get my attention. I had severe autoimmune disorders and and severe anxiety attacks and on um, anti-anxiety medication and, you know, different things going on trying to get my attention. But um, I was uh, too, probably too scared to really look at a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then you just had s something uh, obvious hit you that you realized, oh gosh, I'm out. Like this is not working for me anymore. And then you went to Indiana and that's where you, you mentioned how um, your spirituality and your spiritual gifts came on board when you did that and you went to your, visit your grandmother. Could you be specific so people can relate? Like what, how did, how did they come on board? Everybody wants to know, how do I tap into my spiritual gifts? Like, it, was there anything specific that you did or happened that did right. that? Yeah. I mean, because so, and, and I, teach a lot of people how to awaken their spiritual gifts without requiring being thrust into that divine intervention <laughs> yeah. situation right. because it's not always uh completely necessary for me it was um so for me that kind of divine intervention thread continued when i arrived to indiana and it really because in the moment um when i was in still in new york city in brooklyn 
in the exact location where the initial awakening took place, my clairaudient gift where I can hear uh, spirit speak to me turned on. And that was through the directions in my clear audience that guided me to that proof that I finally needed to see to get out of that cycle of insanity in the previous relationship. So then when I went to Indiana, it really, it was still like divine moving through me and finally opening up the gifts that had I, um, you know, allowed myself to continue the psychic courses that I was taking, you know, when I was in that old relationship, I, I was doing those things, but my ex would express his discomfort. And because of my codependency, I would put his feelings above my own. And so I would quit the psychic course, or I would stop reading the, all the metaphysical books or how, learning how to do poem reading and all the things that I was innately, um, lit up by and really drawn to, I would stop doing them to appease the relationship and to appease, um, his needs. And so, you know, really, um, while yes, there are a lot of ways shamanic journeying being uh, a main way where people can immerse into a, an experience to awaken their own abilities inside of themselves. It was, my case was divine, just coming in and like they did with the clairaudient, just turning it on. So they turned on my clairvoyance, turned on my telepathy, turned on all sorts of things. And, and it was through those additional gifts being turned on that I was able in that next week. I mean, I stayed at my grandma's for a long time, just processing and moving my way through, but it was in that additional week where the more gifts got turned on so that spirit could show me my entire previous life without the illusion and denial that I had been entrenched in. So I was literally being played back experiences that I had had and scenarios and situations, but I was finally seeing them in truth and in illumination. And so I just, that's why I kept having awakening after awakening after awakening and more and more realizations that I was not who I thought I was and I needed support from the other side finally. That's fantastic. You know, it's, uh, we're going to get into shamanism and your experience as a shaman. And I'd love for you to give people a little foundational history of what shamanism actually is. Um, but I'll just note jumping ahead a little on that, that, you know, it's been said that there's a difference between someone who's called to be a shaman and practicing shamanism. Now, would you agree with that? Because it sounds like you got a loud and clear call to be a shaman. That's what it sounds like to me. What yes. do you think about that? Yeah, I, I do agree with a version of exactly what you just said. And I actually talk about that in my animal power book that's out because, yes, it's a modern day power animal compendium, which I learned from my publishers is a fancy way of saying guidebook. I was like, what? I, I wrote a compendium? What's yeah, that? Yeah, right. <laughs> that was very funny. Yeah, look um, that up. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for clarifying that term. Yes. I didn't know what you meant. <laughs> yeah. But in my compendium, um, yes, I wanted to give people the context of the foundational place from which the book was, um, you know, I was called mm -hmm. to write the book and, mm -hmm. and where the book comes from. And, and so, yes, I do agree. You know, there are a lot of people that, of course, you know, shamanism is one of, and some people believe the oldest ancient spiritual healing art on the planet. And so because of that, it's very natural and in it's in it's all of our birthrights to learn how to commune with honor and connect with great mother earth and commune with honor and connect with the unseen realms and and the cosmos and great spirit and source um so yes it's all of our birthright to to enter into those territories but it does typically tend to go in those two paths that you described where someone might feel a deep you know, soul resonance um, when they meet a shaman or or hear about a shamanic ceremony that's taking place. And if they answer that call and lean into that work, it may be a situation where the person simply um, needs to 
immerse in certain shamanic energies, blessings, transmissions, songs, rituals, so that their soul can receive exactly what it's needing or wanting for their healing or evolution at that time. And it can function just like that. But then there is that other path where people are encoded with a very, very, very specific, and it's, and even as I say that I can taste it, the specific call to become an embodiment as a shaman and to um, align with being a shaman in terms of this is fully in all dynamics and aspects who I am, um, both, both personally and professionally being of service to others. That's a very um, different kind of essence and activation. So I know that I was incarnated with that shamanic calling already encoded inside of me. It's just because I was suppressing it and denying it. It wasn't until I had my awakening and devoted to my own healing that my own wisdom and truths inside of me could finally then get into a place of readiness to start to communicate with me. That's beautiful. Uh, I love it. You know, it's, my understanding is that shamans are people who uh, walk between both worlds and that in all ancient cultures and all religions for that matter, there's been shamans in every known culture and that they were always considered to be the wisdom keepers, the, the, the keepers of sacred knowledge, the ones that could commune and connect to the, the mystery and the great mystery and other resources to help people to heal and thrive. And, uh, you know, it's sad to me today to hear a lot of people just completely bashing or poo pooing shamanism as some kind of cult or something that's evil, something that's against religion, when it's truly just about communing with nature and that all is one and promoting love and unity and acceptance. Do I have that right? Bingo, bingo, bingo. Okay. Yes. Yeah. The unconditional love and mm -hmm. the unity and the oneness are absolutely three paramount yeah. foundational, um, most ancient truth pillars of what shamanism. And isn't that what God is? Unconditional love? I mean, yeah, what, my what, definition of God right? is unconditional love of all that is. And that's what shamanism kind of, is. Yeah. Okay. There yeah. you go. So, wow. And how how do you actually personally, Allison, like live your shamanism every day mm -hmm. in your personal life, not mm -hmm. with your work with a client per se? Gosh, oh my Lord. It's, I mean, even in you just asking that question, I just see <laughs> everything that you do all day long. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, yeah. I there's, just breathe it, right? <laughs> yeah. There's no delineation or separation. It's like cool. the vision I got shown was just infinite threads because- Awesome. I am I am at one with it and and total devotion to it. So it can take shape and form and in any way it can take shape with me facing my own blind spots, um, you know, that I thought were cleared a while ago that weren't. It can take the shape in me having wildly uncomfortable conversations um, mm -hmm. with people who I am very much clear in the calling that I need and that their soul is ready to receive the information that I'm um, to share. It can take the shape of me starting every single day <clears throat> at my altar and uh, getting downloads of sacred songs. And um, it can take the shape of me taking our dog Cookie for a walk and being gifted with um, a butterfly wing on that walk and bringing it and placing it and talking to that animal medicine and asking it, you know, does it want to be placed in my Agua de Florida? Or does it want to be mm -hmm. turned into an elixir? Does it, you know, it, I mean, those mm -hmm. are just like right off the top of my head, three very or four very present um, examples. But uh, yeah, back to what you were saying, if it's all right, I think there's a piece trying to come in um, around shamanism that I feel, you know, is, is important that I always want to clarify because, you know, as you touched on shamanism and when spoken of, it tends to really evoke some sensitive waters within a lot of people. And, um, 
And I'm pretty clear on the why of that and, and some different examples, but just so that uh, we're operating in, in clarity, I always like to acknowledge that I very much honor, revere, um, and give deepest respects to First Nations and indigenous peoples because the very first people that inhabited this planet who answered the call to shamanism, it's through their bravery and devotion that certain ancient wisdom traditions have carried on for thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And the way in which um, a lot of indigenous people have had to um, go to great lengths to keep certain traditions and ways protected and so that they can sustain, you know, I always like to acknowledge that um, because without their bravery and devotion to these ancient truths, um, we would be uh, in a lot of trouble on this planet. Um, and with all that being said, then there's this other side of honoring shamanism, which, you know, you brought up that shamanism aside from perhaps antarctica it's been practiced on every continent for thousands of years you know there's celtic shamans and nordic shamans and um you know maori shamans 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 everywhere um it's not everyone uses the term and that's another thing right there's so many threads of like the of probable or potential confusion for me right very soon after my awakening, I was very clearly instructed and guided. That's where my medicine name, Rock Star Shaman, came from. And I am to use the title shaman. I am to take up space as a woman shaman and to use that name. But I have, and I have some other colleagues that do and, and others who, who don't. They don't say they're shamans at all, or they might call themselves shamanic practitioners. Every single shaman is here on a different mission, and we have a different blueprint within us that's to serve and administer different medicines to the world. Um, so, so yes, while it is all of our birthrights to learn how to speak and, and receive the blessings of great mother earth and great spirit, I also always like to acknowledge um, what indigenous communities have had to endure in order to preserve a lot of these truths. Amen. Let's give some reverence and respect to that and gratitude for sure. Thank you for giving us that background and for people to really get a perspective of the depth of what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. um, so, all right. Uh, how about let's like, let's like switch gears a little bit and get into the development of your book, which you mentioned mm -hmm. was the basis what was based on your experience as a shaman basically is was the vehicle that allowed you to write the book from what I understand. Yeah, it's a good way of putting it uh -huh. um, right after my awakening uh, and me devoting finally to hearing the messages from from the unseen realms, I was instructed to uh, embark on my own personal healing journey and was shown a couple of different shamans right out of the gate that I was to work with. One of them being my aunt and in her soul retrieval session for me, uh, that's when the power animal world started to come in. So I met my core power animal, which is the black jaguar or also known as the black panther. And then the bear, deer and frog came in to all support me in different ways because every power animal has different healing attributes, wisdom teachings, messages. So the black jaguar was, you know, and continues to urge me to continue to wake up all of my spiritual truths and powers and abilities and to just trust the mysticism within me and, and of all of it. And the deer kept my heart open so I wouldn't shut it down. And it's really a very um, fierce and powerful yet gentle uh, heart medicine. And it's, it's the path of the heart and the frog was that medicine of facing the emotions that I hadn't for so long and going into those healing waters and taking leaps of faith because the frog can only leap forward. It does not look back. And that's what I really needed to do at that time. And then the bear was that grounding, stabilizing, really just 
supportive love that I needed. It would come to me in meditations and it would sit with its back against a tree and ask me to sit in its lap and to lean back and lean back more and to let go and to let go more. And Bear was really my first teacher in learning how to truly let go into the abyss and the void of of all of the uh, energy medicine. So they came in right away. And then I have worked with them every single day since. And our relationship has just gotten so, so strong. And I have, you know, trusted them to show up for me when I give live power animal readings and audiences of thousands and thousands of people. And they trust me to be a voice for them. And I actually flew to Bali to write my first book. And I had already like lined up with my literary agents and we were on on a course for me to write a book on surrender yet when i got to bali the animals came to me and said that's actually not the book and we're asking you to co-create a modern day guidebook with us <laughs> so and you weren't supposed to write a book on surrender you were supposed to to surrender <laughs> yes exactly i know i love that that medicine it's like in, in an essence the that surrender book was written just in that way of wow. me letting go and it's an example of surrendering <laughs> totally yeah so and then over the class the last four years I have communed with them and, and wrote Animal Power Book, and, which is available now, and then Animal Power Card Deck, which will be out in spring. So it was many years of devoted uh, communing with them to have this finally birth. It was a very um, powerful process. I want to get into the process of writing of uh, you writing that book. But before we do and jump ahead, can you please define for us what a power animal is? Yes. Let's see what wants to come through. So power animals are our animal allies and guides that are in both our waking seen worlds and also the unseen world. So because I, as I mentioned, they really embody different uh, medicinal teachings, different animals will try to present to you to let you know that there's information that they have that could benefit your path or uh medicines that they wish to impart on you again it's all there are brothers and sisters they're truly are some of our most loving allies so in waking life they may show up for you over and over again and unless you allow yourself to be consciously aware you won't even pick up on the fact that ladybugs are just everywhere mm -hmm. and that your mom sent you a ladybug tablecloth and then you know when you get on the train somebody's talking about how their favorite creature is a ladybug if you have yourself closed off to the unseen realms and all of the mysticism you will never connect those dots but if you let yourself yes. open up then you can take cue. Wow, what in the heck in three days? I've literally heard about Ladybug 10 times. Well, that's where you need to go to Animal Power Book or, you know, another reference point to learn what are the teachings of Ladybug? Why, what is she trying to tell me? What is she trying to help me with? And then these animals can also come to you in dreams. And once you also start to learn what different animals represent, you can then consciously connect with them and call upon them to help you to to be of additional support because we are not meant to go through this earthly incarnation alone you know it's especially now in this in this incarnation there's there's so much and um it's important that we don't forget that there are loving supportive nourishing energies that are everywhere, but it's up to us. That's where our, it's our responsibility to learn how to connect with that support and to call it in. So beautiful. And I will add that, um, as we mentioned with all ancient cultures, they all had a reverence and respect for nature and all animals. And the uh, Native Americans didn't even think of animals as different than them. They yeah. thought of them as a different type of people, if you will, almost like a different race. They thought of animals as their brothers and sisters and cousins. And there was a, there was a, there was just like a natural cooperation and respect mm -hmm. in living in harmony. And 
a lot of what we know now, and please, of course, correct me because you obviously are the expert on this, but from what I understand, what we know now about learning from power animals and spirit animals is that all of all of the associations that were, were made uh, with each of them were based on just observation, just mm-hmm. observation over years and decades and centuries of observing these these creatures and this includes insects as well it's not just like bunnies and stuff you know it's everything and how they live and how they operate with the environment and what unique specific attributes each one has and how we pull that together in the global macro nature of all of life and that we're one big ecosystem and we all are part of the mix of the big soup, if you will, Mm -hmm. you know, that mixes together and all very important. And I love how your book, which I definitely want to get into more detail of how unbelievably beautiful it is and how amazingly written it is and deep and user-friendly and all that. Um, The pictures are just phenomenal, but I love how you talk about, um, how like the tick is just as important and symbolic as something like, you know, the bear or the black Panther. That's so cool. You know, like the tick, yes. well, tell us about the tick. I just, it's just so cool. Cause it just really helps people respect like, yeah. you know, flies are important, you know, Absolutely. like spiders are important. Ants are important. Like they're all, one's not cuter and nicer like dogs than the other. So do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Totally. Yeah. Every creature is so reverent and I love that mm-hmm. you brought that in. And it was so important to me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, it was brought up in question. Um, I was very clear, uh, you know, the animals presented showing me who, you know, because this book features 100 animals to energize your life and awaken your soul. And there's millions of creatures out there. So 100, you know, mm-hmm. yes, it's in some respects, it, I mean, it's a large book, it's over 300 pages, but it, it takes some discernment to figure out like which of these are, mm-hmm. are coming in here. But I was so clear uh, that yes, tick absolutely came through. Another one of my favorites is actually the leech. Um, I have such a cool personal story, um, actually with both, but especially with the leech. And it was, you know, brought up in, um, and it's not a bad thing that it was questioned, but I, I work with an incredible uh, publishing team and and there's a lot of people weighing in on um, you know sharing their viewpoints and their perspectives from their expertise and it was brought up in question especially about the tick and i'm i'm like you know just because the tick can evoke and a discomfort does not mean that we cut it out or cut it off that that's more reason to actually include it Um, because shamanism is about the totality and learning how to trust ourselves to navigate the full spectrum of life, to be at one with the full spectrum of emotions and to not disconnect or cut off from any part of it. Um, and finding the, the beauty and the, and the loving medicine and everything. So when it was questioned, I became all the more adamant that no tick must be included. And to me, it gives your book more credibility. If you're not just showing the light, you know, I mean that, and that's what a true shaman or healer is, or evolved person is, is that it's all of it. You know, we, as we mentioned in the beginning, if, if divine source, spirit, God power is, is all is unconditional is one, then it's the dark and the light. And yeah. there's a reason why the tick is on the planet. You know, it's like, it's like a doctor saying, oh, you can cut out your uh, spleen. You don't need it. You know what? Oh, you're just born with it by per per chance. Right. Right. Ticks are here for a reason. And to me, it gave your book more credibility Mm. because the tick was there. Plus it's extremely educational because I never thought of a tick as something that, uh, what did you say that it teaches us to not be attached It's alchemy (laughs) alchemy and healing and non-attachments. I'm like, that's a really cool way to think of it. Yeah, yeah. And I also the other cool, unique um, aspect of the Animal Power book is that I also felt called to um, invite 25 global contributors who are also spiritual teachers or shamans from different parts of the planet. And uh, Daniel Vitalis, who's a registered mm-hmm. main guide, and he's a host of a show called Wild Fed. Uh, I asked him to be a contributor and he shared a story about the tick. And um, I won't read the whole thing, but what part of what he shared in his quote, this is from Daniel Vitalis, 
He starts with, may you feel every tick is a phrase my wife and I say each spring as the last snows melt in New England. Walking through the woods or fields between the last snow and the first inevitably leaves us searching our bodies for ticks. Finding a dozen isn't unusual. In centuries past, this part of the world was home to charismatic predatory megafauna like wolves and mountain lions. After wanton human extirpation <laughs> tamed this landscape, people didn't need to pay attention anymore and a kind of blunted awareness took hold. That was until the rise of the ticks. Um, so anyways, he's obviously uh, a very deep guy. And um, so yeah, he, I, I just love that I can bring in people's personal experience with these animals to show like their perspective and how they view it and tick also represents facing fears and heightened awareness and discomfort ancient consciousness and healing trauma and the leech was you know a very big example of that for me i previously had been very scared of leeches and kind of had this perspective that they were slimy and creepy and i was called in my healing journey to uh to work with the leech therapist and i did so he was a man from austria and it was a whole process which is too long of a story to get into but i will just say and me answering that call to work with leech within mere seconds and looking at them learning about them from this leech expert and then having the leeches placed on me um, there were about five or six placed above my liver I, and seeing their workings and tuning into their energy, I went from fear to love and reverence within a matter of seconds. And so it's just, it's really cool to, to just explore what these creatures that we may feel are scary, um, how when you connect and you lean in more, how it can really alchemize and change. Yeah, that's super powerful. And I, I love how your book, um, just the format in which you did it, not only the, you know, that you have the, the contributors, which are phenomenal in their own and, and bringing their own experience, which just gives more depth to what you're saying. Um, but I like how you talk about, you know, you break up each animal by what, what it, it significant, it, how it's significant, its unique message. And the power practice, you call it power mm. practices, which is how the person can then apply the, the unique medicine of that animal in their mm -hmm. everyday lives. So it's super user friendly. Thank you. I'm so glad you picked up on that because a lot of times in all of my years, uh, you know, journeying people through shamanic journeys to connect with their power animals, uh, oftentimes I would then get asked like, and now what, like what's next? Mm. You know, people, <laughs> once they start to lean into this work, they want to oftentimes to lean in more and to keep walking deeper on the path. And so that's where the idea of each of the 100 having their own power practice and it's a ritual or ceremony or meditative practice you can do to specifically deepen your rapport and connection mm -hmm. with that animal because the, it, the, these worlds, once we lean into them, especially with the power animal realm, it continues to open up and expand more and more and more, but it really does take us leaning in and taking those steps because mm -hmm. a lot of the guides in the unseen realms want that invitation. And because we have free will and, and a lot of guides, human and otherworldly form are not invasive. And so the more that you take the steps and call in the connection, the bigger it gets. It's like you take a step forward, they take a step forward with you, you know, toward you. Yeah, uh, I, I agree. And, uh, you know, I, I found that in my own practices that uh, it just grows and grows and grows because, but it all starts with your attention and your awareness. You have to be paying attention to your environment and, and be present to notice, you know, notice the bird that that just flew by your window. Notice, like uh, register it in your conscious brain yeah. and maybe associate what's going on right when that happened, you know, put, connect the dots, like everything else. Like we talked to people about, you know, your diet and your moods and how you're sleeping and your exposure to light and frequency and noise. And all, it's all, you got to start connecting the dots and open your mind, your awareness, but it can't happen if you've got your face plastered to your phone all the time totally. you know, and, and you're not noticing the world around you. And you're, you're praying for your miracle. You're praying for 
quote unquote, God to help you, but you're not paying attention to the help that's trying to come in and the vehicle in which it's being delivered. So true, because had I, when I was walking our dog this morning, had I been on my phone or had I been too much in my own head or just just kind of sleepwalking through life, I would never have seen that butterfly wing on my path. I mean, it was a very small wing. And had I not been present and had I not been in a state of conscious awareness and awakeness and connection with the world around me, I would have walked right past it or on it and never seen it. But I saw it and I now have it at my altar and I know that I need to commune with it further. And I know that it was in a very generous, loving way, the butterfly coming forward saying, you know, you're getting your new wings, which mm -hmm. for me makes a lot of sense based upon um, just my own personal path, especially the last couple of months. It's a very powerful sign, you know, that I'm that I've been on the right track and doing the particular maneuvering that I was doing was indeed correct. And um, so it provides a lot of deep affirmation and clarity and support when we let ourselves stay connected to it. Yeah, it's so powerful. You know, the other day, you know, we mentioned I have my little Charlotte, my little five pound Yorkie, and we were uh, walking the other day and um, I was really busy. I just had a super slam schedule. So I was kind of multitasking on my phone while I'm walking her. And um, she stopped and she was just kind of like, just kind of almost frozen and staring at like this low bush and just kind of, she was just acting weird. Like she wasn't like, do you have to pee? Do you have to, what do you got to do? You got to sit down, you're tired, what's happening? And she just kind of wouldn't really move. And so I'm waiting and waiting because she is a little bit older. So I don't really, you know, force her or anything to exercise or anything, but long story short, I finally just picked her up because she also had a, uh, she tore her ACL last January. So oh. she's, she's fully rehabbed now, but I have to watch it sometimes. So I did pick her up, but then, so we continued to walk and then we went back to the house right at the very same spot where she had stopped by the bush. All of a sudden, boom, this huge hawk Whoa. spread its wings Ooh, and it's right I did too. Flew right at chest level. I'm not even kidding you. Maybe, wow. uh, well, how far? I'm not good with math, but maybe 10, 10, 12 feet from my, my body, right wow. in front of us. So mm -hmm. Charlotte, my dog, knew something was there. Okay, so mm -hmm. here we go again. Amy not paying attention. Amy caught in her head, stuck on her phone, work, 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 not paying attention to my environment. And here's my own little dog that you know, animals are our teachers. They, mm -hmm. I always say children and animals are our teachers. We can learn so much. They eat when they're hungry. They sleep when they're tired. They like to play, <laughs> right? They let you know if there's tummy hurts or whatever. Like I, I always call Charlotte my furry Buddha because she, she teaches me how to live better. Mm -hmm. But that was an example of a very powerful message to me from Hawk. And like you, I'm going through some things, you know, probably everybody is right, but spiritually, emotionally, personally, where I'm looking for guidance, I'm looking for direction. And to me, sometimes when I get a very clear uh, interaction with an animal, it, it's like, it's like a divine wink, mm -hmm. you know, and it just gives me a sense of peace and comfort. And certainly I don't feel as alone as I often do of like, we got you, you know, mm -hmm. don't worry. We, we got you. You're, you're doing okay. We, we acknowledge you're here, you know, and it just brings me a lot of comfort. So I just share with people watching and listening that, you know, pay attention, keep your eyes and heart open. Mm -hmm. And life is probably trying to bring you love and peace and everything that you're dreaming for. You just got to learn to learn to understand the language that it comes in. Yeah, and learn how worthy you are of receiving and learning because it also brings with it that trust piece, which is so mm -hmm. important <clears throat> when you start to open yourself up and start to hear the whispers of the wind or start to receive messages and teachings. It also activates a deep alchemical process within you of learning how to trust yourself 
and and trust um, what's coming in and trust how to work with it and when it's it's just a never ending web of uh, evolution. <laughs> right on. And that's back to your book. That's another great part of your book. I love how you have in the index um, that you, what you've done is you've listed all hundred animals or creatures in your book you are listed. And then people can look up depending mm -hmm. on what quality or characteristic they want more of in their life. For example, if you want help having better boundaries, emotional mm -hmm. boundaries, you put skunk and armadillo with that. Or if somebody wants to have more patience, their kids are driving them crazy or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, then you listed ant, praying mantis, snail, and worm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I just thought that was a brilliant, because I have a lot of animal books. I'm sure you're familiar with Ted Andrews and his mm -hmm. work. And I yeah, I mean, that. I'm sure. So because I, I actually wanted to be a vet when I was a kid. I oh, always, cool. Oh, yeah. And, and I've always been into medicine. I want to be a doctor. So like animal doctor, perfect. So, um, but uh, my point is, is that um, I just thought it was a really cool way to, I never seen any other resource do mm. that is what I'm trying to say. Put like, okay, I want this quality. Oh, then I definitely want to go toward these type of animals or these creatures, which is brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Like you said, we, um, wanted this to have a, a balance of a lot of different medicines. Um, for me, the sacred piece and, mm -hmm. and the true deep ancient embodiment of these teachings was paramount. Mm -hmm. um, but I also, with the art that you touched on, I wanted it to be vibrant Amazing. and powerful yeah. and fun. And then very you know, we also wanted mm -hmm. it to be very um, easy to use. So yeah, mm -hmm. if you want to flip to the back of the book if you're experiencing something um you know like you're feeling a, a lot of anger and you want to get back to your heart then yeah you go back and into the index and what animals bring you back to to your heart center and to love and and to have a, a quick easy reference point yeah it's fantastic and and i really love the section at the end with resources where you list mm. for us foundations, associations, charity, where yeah. we can support the environment. There's one for bees and jaguars and, you know, plants and trees and it's, and native American cultures. And it's just phenomenal. Your, your book is just a service to the world. You should be very proud of yourself. And I hope you're giving yourself a lot of TLC because I know you just completed it depending on when people here listen to the show. Yeah. Um, um, that it's a monumental amount of work, my friend. I know Thank my hat's you. off to you. Well Thank done. You. I well really, done. I really appreciate that. I, I really thank you for being so honoring of it and really getting <laughs> the magnitude of, uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely the most initiatory and at times challenging, um, journey of my entire career to, to birth this out into the world. It's, it's a big responsibility, you know, to, mm. to share a, about medicines and to have a book rooted in shamanism and to also want to make sure that sacred reciprocity piece was in there because it's, mm. it's very important. I never wanted to, you know, feel like, oh, you just learn about these animals so that you can take from them, right? You know, you learn about these animals so that you can see what the, they can do for you. Right, what not, you can get, get out of it. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. it's not that. It's like mm. weaving in certain languaging of, especially in the power practices of beginning with first thanking this animal mm -hmm. for so generously coming forward and 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 with the putting the resources in the back of different chari charitable organizations mm. that you can give to, because that's a part of my personal life. I don't, you know, put that on my website and say like, oh, I've given, you know, this amount of money to this place and this place, but that's just what I innately feel drawn to do to give back and to have that full circle uh, current of, of reciprocity and things. So it was a very meticulously um, thought out book. <laughs> so thank you. Well, well done. Well done. What animal or creature, Allison, surprised you the most when you in the uh, development of this book? Oh, wow. That's a great question. Let me tune in and see. Ah, oh, different ones are coming in, but let me hone in on one. Hmm. 
There's so many. Um, there were a bunch that flashed in, octopus being one, but one that mm. uh, came in a medicine ceremony just this past weekend that I just love so much. And I feel like it wants to be talked about a little bit. So I have my book right here. So I'm just turning mm -hmm. to it now. It's the snail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love snail medicine so much. And it's for those that are watching the video, this is the art. Isn't that such a great... It's just such cool art. And didn't that artist pass away recently? We should he probably did. say his name. He did, yeah. What's his these... name? William? William, with an N on the end. William Santiago. Yeah, yeah. these, um, these works of art are his, his last uh, pieces of art that he created in this lifetime. And mm -hmm. yeah, I give deep honor and thanks to him because... Uh, you know, the book could not have come together in the way that it did without him. So thank mm -hmm. you, William. And uh, yeah, the snail represents spiritual evolution, the path of least resistance, mm -hmm. conscious awareness, which honestly feels like the theme of our entire interview. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> pace, intimacy, and expansion. And um, I think it wanted to come through for for me because it's been very present and uh like i said i i sat in a uh medicine ceremony over the weekend and a lot of the teachings and uh yeah the things that i was leaning into really were bringing me back to uh greater expansion especially in terms of of intimacy and I think, you know, not just for me, but right now leaning into those teachings would be of service for, for everyone, you know, people, um, yeah, for different reasons and ways have just really been pushed into a place of greater separation. And we as human spiritual beings were wired for connection and unification and intimacy. And so, I think snail wants to come in to invite people back into that space of expanded intimacy. <laughs> I completely agree with everything you just said. I had no idea snail was that comprehensive. First of all, <laughs> um, you know, you always hear, you always hear going at a snail's pace, you know, like mm -hmm. something that's kind of slow, but uh, yeah. And slowing back down and remembering, yeah. you know, it's mm -hmm. a part of that too. It is a part of that pacing and okay. it's this, the other energy of the last couple of years, it's created a lot of chaos and freneticness yeah. and confusion and snails like slow down, take yeah. a breath, remember, let's pause here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. I'm just taking that in. Amen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Take a breath. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Wow. 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 Allison, as we get toward the end, um, would you like to share with us some, or just give props to any of your greatest spiritual teachers? And, and, and if so, what lessons you learned from them? Oh, goodness. Okay. I'm going to tune in because there's just been so many, mm -hmm. both of this world and otherworldly. Um, so let me just see who's most present right now. Well, I always love to give respect to Ascended Master Jesus. He is my main love and light guide this lifetime. And um, tew, just don't know what I would have done walking on this very initiatory shamanic path without him and mm -hmm. his... Uh, love and um yeah just him being present for me every single day he he has really gotten me through some of the most challenging rites of passages um so he came in first one moment mm -hmm. and while um the spirits of plants and the teachers embodied within certain plants uh did not play a, a very uh present role in my shamanic journey for many, many years. Um, while I learned how to connect with my gifts without their support, uh, in the last number of years, um, various teacher plant spirits have, have come forward, um, uh, peyote being one of them. And it really, uh, just, yeah, opened up huge miracles for my life, especially, um, in the path of the heart. And I also want to thank, um, the spirit of Kana and the spirit of Wachuma for coming in. And, um, it's been really beautiful for me because I didn't know if, 
you know, that's, that's another misconception that some, of course, not everyone has, but some people equate shamanism to plant medicine ceremonies. Yeah. And um, while all shamans commune with nature and earth, not all shamans are, are plant medicine facilitators. And uh, so one of my main teachings is helping people to know that and to know that it's possible to open up your spiritual calling and gifts um, just through connecting with your own soul and, and great mother earth and, and spirit. With that being said, um, I also want to give a lot of respect to the plant spirits who have did eventually uh, reveal and come in. And it's funny, uh, even though I'm, you know, not so much a, a plant medicine shaman, I've been asked to give headlining talks at a lot of psychedelic conferences. So there is one coming up in November called Meet Delic in Las Vegas, where I'll be speaking on surrender and integration, how to have plant and soul uh, alignment to master the journey. So it's been beautiful to see um, me being called into those spaces to talk about my, my personal path with it all. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Okay. And uh, tell us uh, what the Eagle Condor prophecy is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in a nutshell, um, it speaks, it's an ancient prophecy that speaks of a time when the energies and consciousness and medicine of the eagle would unite with the energies and consciousness of, of the condor. And the condor uh, is representative of the south and the eagle is representative of the north. And so it's a time of, of unity and coming back together as one and with sacredness and reverence and respect, leaning in to conversations and sharings of teachings um, so that we can get away from all of this divisiveness and separation and, and back into a uh, communing as one, remembering that we are all, um, mm -hmm. all the human, human race. And so it, uh, it's been one that's been beautiful to have activated even more within the book from me being more of, of the North and um, that, that Eagle medicine representation and being the author of the book. And then William Santiago, the illustrator, the artist for the book, he um, was from, um, before he passed away, he's uh, native to Brazil and mm. actually didn't even speak much English. And, um, and that was one of the ways I knew picking the artist was very, very important to me. Yeah. And, um, and I knew as soon as I saw his work that he was the one, and it was before I knew that he lived in Brazil. And then once I found that out, I, that light bulb of the Eagle and Condor prophecy and he and I coming together to do our part, you know, him believing in me and me believing in him and coming wow. together in unity to birth this medicine book. We, we did our part before his passing to uh, further activate that prophecy. You had a baby together. <laughs> we did. We did. Yeah. Wow. That is phenomenal. What a great, great story. So, wow, we've learned so much, you know, some takeaways for people just to be aware, to observe, to be present, and to know that nature is divine, trying to communicate with us all the time, to pay attention, to have a respect for all living creatures, that they're all part of the system, and all have something to teach and give and share. Um, your book is so phenomenal, so beautiful, so educational, so practical, so necessary. Mm -hmm. I, do I, do I need more so's? I don't know if there's <laughs> enough so's in there for, for your book and your work, Allison, you are so inspiring to not only women, but all people. Do you have any, uh, last tips for us, for those of us who don't have the, uh, the, the honor of having such direct downloads as you refer to them. Um, how would someone start to tap into their own intuition, their own divine voice, their own knowing what are some ways that mm -hmm. people can say, I want to, I want to do what she does in my own life. Like how does she feel so plugged in? How can we get more plugged in in our everyday life? 
Yeah, that's a beautiful question. The things, there are a lot of things that I could say, but the ones coming in is um, to begin your day, like truly the very start when your eyes are still fluttering open before you reach for your phone or, you know, jump out of bed, stay with yourself in the bed and place your left hand in your heart and your right hand on your lower belly and start to connect right away with your breath and breathing into your heart, excuse me, your heart center and ask your heart because that's really where we want to be living from and, and opening up that mm -hmm. intelligence and that ancient wisdom and that intuition that re resides there. That's truly the most potent and powerful place um, that we can live from. So connecting your breath with your heart and asking your heart at least two questions before you get out of bed. I usually start with my beautiful heart. How are you feeling right now? And I mean, imagine, you know, mm -hmm. starting your day from that connection point, uh, because your heart may be needing to tell you something that you don't even know is, is going on in there. Mm -hmm. It may say that it's feeling some rage or frustration or, or whatever. And then from that place, you can ask it why, and, and, and what does it need for, for that, um, feeling to feel fully expressed so that it can be uh, shifted into a place of, of greater ease. So ask your heart at least a couple of questions. How are you? And if you're trying to bring in more joy into your life, ask your heart, my beautiful heart, what do you want to experience to feel more joy today? And it will answer. So, because that's, that's our intuition right there. So that, that will start to get you more, uh, in unification and synced up, um, with the wisdom. And I also always recommend having an altar space and altars don't have to be complex or extravagant. It can literally be your favorite river rock that you found on a walk you took and a tea light candle. It's just, it's a place in your home that signifies and represents, this is my safe space to remember, to feel, to reconnect, to to start to receive those those informations the last thing i'll say is if the surrender aspect resonates with you um i used to have an online course that had nine different shamanic journeys and one of them was a surrender specific one that had a surrender statement but you can come up with your own surrender statement if you want to start to cease your suffering and get out of your own way and start to commune more with the benevolent unseen realms just jot down, you know, a couple of sentences to whoever it is you speak to, whether it's universe, source, God, goddess, whatever it is, and say, you know, you express your willingness to great mother earth and your soul and those other um, places you connect with. C talk out loud from your altar and from your heart that you're ready to um, begin to, to receive their messages. Beautiful. Such great, great advice. Thank you for sharing that with us, Allison. Allison Charles, are there any last words you'd like to share with the guests before, uh, or our, excuse me, our audience before we wrap up and you also share with us how we can find you and your card and your, your cards in the book and all of that? I think one thing that's very present um, is that actually in uh, one Asian language, uh, the word shaman actually translates to, I don't know. <laughs> and I love that so much. Um, a fellow shaman, dear brother of mine, Paul mm -hmm. Alexander, who I've known for a long time, he comes from that lineage and tradition and, and our time as friends and in me working with him, he does incredible acupuncture. He's who shared that. And he wrote the character, um, mm -hmm. of that word shaman. And I've, I've had it on my refrigerator and I just think right now it's, an important place for us to be in just that space of openness because what i'm seeing is you know with this attempt of separation and division it's tending to put people into two groups like on two ends of a spectrum and it's like wow you know we're all these magnificent infinite beings who are so multi-talented and multi-dimensional and incredible and there's infinite possibilities of of how to experience this life how is it that we're being pushed into just these two ways of of thinking and so i just 
invite people to perhaps on that full spectrum of an earthly existence if you sense if you're honest with yourself if you're a person that's tending to get pulled into one of those ends of the spectrum of this or that invite yourself back more into the middle have just an open space of an open mind of the i don't know mind and just stay curious and and stay in your center and stay in communing with your heart and the unseen realms so that because if you let yourself stay too staunchly attached to one side or the other you're going to miss out and cut yourself off from a lot of information that's trying to come in to serve your highest greatest good so the i don't know space is a beautiful space to be in that's what came in and then where people can find me one important note if um shamanic journeying and and learning how to connect more speaking to you when you pre-order animal power book from my website which is alisoncharles.com backslash animal power you will get a free video guided shamanic journey that I facilitate where I journey you to meet the power animal who most wants to support you right now. So if you've wanted to have that experience or if you have shamanic journeyed before but haven't met your power animal before, um, when you pre-order the book, you instantly get sent um, that, that video for you to do that work. So that's what I would recommend in terms of connecting with me is at my website or Instagram is at I am Alex. Allison Charles. That is phenomenal. What a great little gift you're giving people uh, with the book. That's brilliant. And, I thought and it how, was the smartest personalized. one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just so personalized too. It's not like, oh yeah, here's a, you know, whatever that goes to everybody. That's phenomenal. And uh, Allison's contact information will be in the show notes and her name is spelled A-L-Y with a Y, Allison. So, and your website is allisoncharles.com. Okay. Again, that's in the show notes. So, wow, this has just been so phenomenal. I will say again, one of my favorite topics, animals and nature, and I'm all about it and connecting with strong, uh, accomplished, uh, self-composed sovereign women is so inspiring to me. Um, Allison, thank you so very much for your time and your, your love and energy and coming on Awakening Aphrodite. Mm, thank you so much for the invitation and for holding such beautiful space, Amy. Okay. And thanks everybody for listening. Please do yourself a favor and check out her book and the cards that accompany it and her website with all her other stuff and her podcast. Allison, your podcast too. Right. right? I do that. Ceremony I Circle. Too. I got I your back, sister. I got your back. <laughs> Ceremony yeah. Circle. You can get Allison all the time with her amazing <laughs> podcast. Thank you. Okay. Thanks everybody. We'll see you next time. Would you like to support my mission to help empower people all over the world to be all of who they truly are? If so, please subscribe to the show, leave a review on iTunes and share it with a friend. And if you're looking to take immediate action to align your energy and optimize your health, visit amyfournier.com. Thanks for listening to Awakening Aphrodite. Let's awaken her together in you. I'm your hostess, Amy Fournier. And I already can't wait to be with you again and for you to hear what I have planned for the next show. Thanks for listening to Awakening Aphrodite with Amy Fournier. To learn more about Amy, check out her website, amyfournier.com. That's A-M-Y-F-O-U-R-N-I-E-R.com. You can also check out Amy's live and on-demand virtual fitness and yoga classes and sign up for her newsletter to receive a free mini ebook of three of her top tips for making holistic health a lifestyle. Again, that's amyfournier.com and get your ebook sent to your email immediately. Connect with Amy on the daily on Instagram at fitamytv, F-I-T-A-M-Y-T-V, and watch many of the podcast episodes and subtopic clips on her YouTube channel, which is also fitamytv. Enjoy, and we'll see you next time on Awakening Aphrodite.